Hey guys, me host Superstar, thank you very much for tuning in. So, today I was meant to be doing a Spider-Man collection video, however, the film, because I went to see Spider-Man this morning, you see, and I was going to film when I got back, the film was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, and I didn't get the full video up and done for you this evening. Um, I have got the big box of figures over there though ready to go. It took me a long time to go through all the boxes in my room uh, preparing for that video. So that video will go out tomorrow night. So apologies for the delay. But I've had a lot of people comment uh, on my Instagram and Facebook posts asking for my opinions on the new Spider-Man No Way Home movie. Um, for the first like few minutes of this video, I'll keep it spoiler free. Uh, but then I am going to go into spoiler territory. So if you haven't seen it yet, you don't want to know anything about the film, please click off this video because uh, I don't want to ruin it for anyone because this film should be one of those films you go in unruined. There's nothing worse than when you get ruined by a film. So the spoiler warnings all over this right now. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. So please be aware, spoilers. Right. Spoiler free part. The film was amazing. I really enjoyed the storyline. I thought it was absolutely a great way to um, round out the arc that, that we've had building around Spider-Man. Now, Sony already told us, uh, and the multiverse, you know, MCU, have already kind of said they're making three more movies, which I thought took the wind out of the sails of this film a little bit, but not in a bad way. Um, it just it took away the peril a little bit for me. I don't like when they tell me that a character is going to be in another movie next month, like next year, next couple of years. It ruins it for me because it takes away that. Oh, what if Spider Man does die? And, you know what I mean? That is a could the could have that happened? No, obviously not. But you know, it's just one of them things for me. But um, one thing to say is the film does not disappoint, and it, in fact, it didn't. It, it took everything that I theorized about and plussed it. Let's be honest, that was an amazing movie. So if you haven't seen it, you may want to click away now because I'm going to go into it in depth. So, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Here we go. I thought the movie was absolutely uh, brilliant. As I say, it was a perfect way to round out this franchise. However, I do wish this was the end of Tom Holland's arc as Spider-Man. Um, the, we're, we're at a point by the end of the movie where he's out on his own, um, no one's in danger anymore, and he's kind of like left and he's kind of made the ultimate sacrifice and lost to most people in his life. And that for me was like a big part of the whole with great power comes great responsibility tagline, which I'm so glad they reused in this movie. That is the thing that has echoed through all the movies is that tagline of with great power comes great responsibility. And he paid the ultimate price by the end of that film. Now, one thing that I struggled with, obviously, by the end of the film, we do we do know that the world has forgotten that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. But obviously, they still know who Spider-Man is. So there's a bit at the end of the film where Peter is saying goodbye to Doctor Strange, but really, it's not a goodbye for them because they can they're still going to know one another because Doctor Strange is going to is going to still remember the fact that he saved Earth with with Spider-Man. So he just won't remember that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. Which I think is a good, a good thing. Obviously that was a main part of the comics for years. Is that nobody knows who he truly is. And only certain people do. And I think at some point they'll cover that again. And I think we'll have this moment again. Where people learn who he is maybe or something. But anyway. Enough of that. Let's go back. Right back to the beginning of the film. So the... the Matt Murdock... We know that Matt Murdock is now in this movie. He is Daredevil, and it is played by Charlie Cox from Netflix, which is amazing. It was great to see him back in that suit with the little glasses on and the cane and stuff. It was great to see Daredevil as Peter Parker's lawyer. As some of those comics back in the day was my favourite. And obviously, at the animated series, <coughs> I love the fact that Matt Murdock was Spider-Man, well, Peter Parker's lawyer in the animated series. And I'd love them to expand on that in the future. I'd love for Daredevil and Spider-Man to meet in costume at some point. Um, obviously, the way Hawkeye is developing, I think we're seeing Kingpin slowly coming up in the Hawkeye series. And now, obviously, we've seen Matt Murdock. So we are slowly building up Daredevil, which is awesome. He was one of my favourite characters growing up. 
Obviously, the main part that everyone's going to remember from this film is the fact that we do finally get to see, yes, Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland. Sorry, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland all together as Spider-Man. We weren't sure how it was going to happen, if it was going to happen, first of all, but we weren't sure in, in the film what capacity it would be in. But I am happy to see after watching that film, we get to see the three Spider-Men fighting the villains side by side, which is amazing. I did have a feeling when I was like about a, week, about a few days ago, and I sort of said it on the podcast before, I got scared because I was like, maybe they're not in it. And I thought we were building it up too much, a bit like, like Star Wars. You know, after Force Awakens came out, where everyone was so anticipating the next chapter, we built it up so much on what storylines could be there. The, the film just couldn't deliver to the hype of the fans. And I was hoping that Spider-Man was not going to have that problem. And you know what? It didn't. They took every idea that I thought of, that other fans thought of, that people that theorised it all, and they basically plussed it and made it bigger than anything I could possibly have imagined. The whole sequence of events were played out so well. The, the comedy between some of the villains was amazing. It was great to see all the Spider-Men together, but it was also great to see like Otto Octavius talk to Green Goblin. It was also cool to see like um to, to see um Jamie Foxx back as Electro, especially as in this one he's got the arc reactor that powers him up to give him more electric and he when he fired it he like turned into the like animated version with the big yellow headpiece and stuff. You could still see you could see like a slight faint outline as he did his powers, which was really cool to see. And obviously Sandman was back in it. And all the original actors were there reprising their roles, which was amazing. Because by the end of the film, obviously, we see them all get powered down one by one as Spider-Men work together to take them out. And the awesome part is, well, like I say, you get to see them all sort of say their goodbyes as their human selves. The actors actually got some airtime as well, which was great to see. <clears throat> obviously, one of the major parts of this is that we we lose this 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 film... Because our Spider-Man, Tom Holland's Spider-Man arc has been very happy to this point. It's been a very jolly, young, happy, hip-go-lucky Spider-Man. And then in this film, Green Goblin, who may I say, William Dafoe has not missed a tick. He is still the Green Goblin from the original movie, which scares me because it's been 20 years. And that guy can still do it. <laughs> and he does that, you know, that thing where he taunts Spider-Man almost like... Uh, more evil and sinister than the Joker, for God's sake. And he, he tells Spider-Man uh, that he has everything he wants. And he can't have everything, Peter. And I love that line. And then, um, you know, the gods can have everything they want. And then, obviously, he uses the glider to kill um, Aunt May, which is insane. That bit... My God, it blew my mind. I did not expect them to kill her off, but the fact that they did it and she uttered the lines with great power comes great responsibility. That, for me, was the was the the Ben moment that we didn't get for Tom Holland. All the other all the other Spider Men had that moment of defeat and the thing that made them avenge and become Spider Man. Tom Holland didn't seem to have that. Yes, he'd been through a lot already. But then he got, this film was like the big boom, the big bang, the big thing that made him realise who he has to become, which I really liked. Then obviously by the very end of the movie, which I thought was really cool, we get to see him in the newer costume, which looked more like the traditional uh, Spider-Man costume that we all know and love. I, I believe it was a new costume anyway, it looked like it, it was more like a light, like a... Uh, electric blue and red, which looked really cool as he was swinging through at the end. And obviously he had his phone, which was uh, the, the CB radios for the um, you know for the police cars and things, just like how we remember Spider-Man doing it back in the comics back in the day. So we're now at this moment where Peter Parker is now on his own in New York. He's going to university. MJ doesn't know who he is. Ned doesn't know who he is. He's kind of just left. So it's going to be awesome to see where Sony goes with this going forward, as I believe it's Sony that will make the next three films. They've already said he's still in the MCU, but I think this was the bow out of Spider-Man being a part of the bigger picture, if that makes sense. I think they're going to focus on the Spider-Verse as a thing, and obviously because of one of the one of the end credit scenes, we know that's going to happen. 
Um, any more thoughts on the end of the film? Just for a round out, let's think. Um, oh, so in the film as well, we see that Ned can actually use Doctor Strange's um, power thing, so he can actually open portals. That was so cool to see. Um, but obviously by the end of the film, he's going to forget. I'm not sure if he'll forget that. I don't know how to what extent it will work. Because the spell was that they will forget Peter Parker was Spider-Man. That was the thing. But it seems like by the end of the film, MJ and that don't even know who Peter Parker is. It's like they never met. Which I thought was weird. So I'm not sure to what extent that spell has happened, what's happened there. Or whether they're just making us think that for then the sequel and then something will happen. I don't know. Um, I'm hoping to see that we see more of that going forward of Spider-Man trying to fix or do something to bring people's memories back. Or I don't know. Because like, obviously he still loves MJ and things like that. And that was a heartbreaking moment at the end of the film and they had to say goodbye. It was a very powerful moment and I hope... That, uh, was this a way for them to write out MJ so they can bring in Gwen Stacy as his future love interest? I don't know. We'll have to see where they go with it going forward. But we do know, thanks to the Michael Morbius trailer, that we potentially there could be Black Cat and Rhino on the way in the MCU. If Black Cat comes into it, obviously Black Cat and Spider-Man were big love interests back in the day. They're building up Morbius. So... And obviously if Matt Murdock gets involved maybe, that could be very cool because there was a love triangle between Spider-Man, Matt Murdock and Black Cat. But it would be weird in the MCU because Tom Holland's Spider-Man's still a kid. He's going to university so he's like, what, 19, 20? I don't know how, how old they are in America when they go to university, but what does that make him about 19, 20 years old? Or is MIT college? I don't know how it works in America. <laughs> but yeah, there's that. Post credit scene wise, I thought the post credit scene was brilliant. So at the end of um, at the end of Venom, we saw Tom Hardy and Venom basically in um, a bed in, in like in like a hotel room kind of thing. He's like laid on the bed, <coughs> and that we find out that Venom has a hive mind, and he recognised when Peter Parker came on the television, but he didn't recognise Tom Holland as Peter Parker. Does that make sense? He recognised Spider-Man. His hive mind remembered Spider-Man. And then in this film... Uh, sorry, at the end of that thing in Venom, in Venom 2, we saw then they got transported, which we now know is thanks to Doctor Strange with the spell. And the Venom basically came into the MCU universe. But we don't see him through the whole movie. We see him in this post credit scene. He's now in a bar in New York somewhere, I believe, talking... To the bartender. And the bartender is telling him the story of the Avengers. Captain America. Thanos. He's told him basically what's happened. And Venom and that. They've had, they've had a few drinks and the joking. And there's a few little gags in there that are a bit silly. But there's the funny part of Venom. He sort of goes maybe we should go find this Peter Parker. And then the portal reopens and he disappears. <laughs> so it's like oh maybe we won't. <laughs> and even Venom sort of goes, we've only just made it to this universe. <laughs> so I thought that was cool. Uh, it gave us a little nugget of, you know, what could have been. But they've removed Tom Hardy's Venom from the equation now. He's now back in his own universe, thanks to the spell and Doctor Strange. I don't think that will ever happen again. I think that was a once in a lifetime thing. But what we do see on the bar top is a little blob of symbiotic black fluidy stuff. Yeah. So obviously that is going to be a sentient and that's going to find its way to the MCU's version of Venom. There we go. That's how they're going to get Venom into the MCU. It's not going to be Tom Hardy's Venom. They're going to look like they're going down the, new, the road of a new Venom. So at this point, the credits have rolled. We've seen the mid credit sequence. There is one more to go. But it's not really an end credit. Well, it is and it isn't. It's a post credit scene, but it's not. It's a trailer for Doctor Strange and the, the Multiverse of Madness, which stick around for. It's really worth seeing. We get to see Miss America for the first time, I believe, in that trailer. She had a back to the camera, but you sort of see the denim jacket with the star on it. At first, I thought, ooh, could that be Captain Carter? But no, I believe it's... I forgot her name. Something Chavez? Is she called Chavez? 
Um, I'll look up the name now. Uh, but yeah, she play, She's going to be. Um, there's a new, a new, a new actress joining the MCU, and she's going to be playing Miss America um, in the in the franchise going forward. And she's going to be in that movie. We're also in that film. Obviously, going to see Do- Doctor Strange and Wanda team up, which is awesome. Can't wait to see uh, Wanda team up. Uh, so I can't. I'm, I'm going to struggle with the pronunciation of this. But yeah, America Chavez is the character name, and the actress uh, playing her is um, oh god, I'm going to I'm going to butcher this name. Jochil Gomez, something Gomez. Uh, I really do apologize about butchering that, but yeah, um, she's going to be joining the cast. So we do kind of get to see her, I think, in this little trailer. Uh, but it, it was like a good minute and a half trailer, but the main part of the trailer, we don't really see anything of, of Wanda too much. We sort of see Doctor Strange ask her for help, um, and then he say, she sort of thinks he's there to talk about what happened with WandaVision. He's not there to talk about that. There's no sign of vision or anything anywhere. Uh, but we, we do see Wanda in the full costume, doing spells and stuff, which is cool. But the main part of the thing is, we get to see Doctor Strange face off against himself, which, <clears throat> because of What If, I think it might be the evil version of Doctor Strange that we saw in What If, because it's a very similar looking thing. Who knows? We'll find out more when that trailer fully drops. But that that that, that was my dissection on first watching. I can't wait to go back to the cinema and see this whole film again, because it was absolutely amazing. Seeing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield back is absolutely amazing. Well worth watching on the big screen. Don't wait for it to come out. Go see it in a cinema. It was worth it. A bit cheesy in places, a bit lighthearted in places, but overall a very dark and gritty Spider-Man movie that is definitely worth your money to go see. That is my dissection of the movie, guys, but what are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments down below. Please, no spoilers down below. I don't want people to see the thing and then read the comments and not realise this is a spoiler review. So please keep the spoilers, uh, the review, the comments spoiler free. But guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm your host, Soupsol, and I'll see you in the next video. But until then, may the force be with you. Bye!